we shall be looking at magnetism magnetism magnets and magnetic field this is a very interesting class and it is going to be very very long because there are a lot of things to cover under magnetism trust me i will make sure that no stone is left unturned when you hear magnet what is magnet magnet is simply a body possessing attractive and repulsive properties it can attract it can repel so magnets contain or they possess both attractive and repulsive properties why possessing that magnet can either be natural or artificial still magnets can be temporary or permanent magnets there are a lot of interesting things to know about magnets remember magnets and magnetic field magnetic field is the region around the space where the influence of magnetic force is being felt a lot to be said under this still in this episode magnets can be natural or artificial natural magnets they exist or occur in nature examples are magnetite or you call them lodestone pyrotite so magnetite and pyrotite they are examples of natural magnets now artificial magnets are obviously man made and these artificial magnets can be divided into two temporary and permanent magnets the temporary magnets can only retain their magnetism for a short while meanwhile permanent magnets can retain magnetism for a very long period of time a good example of artificial magnet is the refrigerator magnet i shall draw a table giving us a simple comparison of natural and artificial magnets before them let's look at these facts about magnets and magnetic fields number 1 a wire carrying electric current will produce a magnetic field with closed field lines surrounding the wire take note at the key point a wire that is carrying electric current will produce a magnetic field which means electric current or charges are responsible for the production of magnetic field number 2 okay <laughs> it is already stated here electric current produces a magnetic field this magnetic field can be visualized as a pattern of circular field lines surrounding the wire electric current will produce a magnetic field and you can think of this magnetic field as a pattern you see circular lines around the wire pattern of lines pattern of lines around the wire so take that or imagine that to be a, mag a magnetic field pattern of lines surrounding a wire now a magnetic field is the area around the magnet or magnetic object or electric charge in which electric force is being exerted a region around the magnet where the effect of that magnet is being experienced if you are a king you have your territory or area where you can say something and people will follow an upper of benin can exert influence in benin city or a state an upper of or only of effect has that influence over its own territory so an upper of benin cannot exert force or influence on another country or another state so for upper of benin its magnetic field is benin so the region where your force or influence is being experienced or exerted you all felt now magnets is any object or material that has attractive 
or a person. Property. Magnet is defined as any object or material that produces a magnetic field that can affect materials around it. Magnet is defined as any material or object that produces a magnetic field that can affect materials around it. Magnetism is the force exerted by magnets when they attract or repair each other. When magnets attract or repair each other, the force that is exerted by these magnets is basically the concept of magnetism. And there is something called electromagnetism, which is electric and magnetic force acting together. That is another interesting and big topic if you are going to study electrical and electronic engineering. Electrical and electronic engineering is an advanced form of physics and mathematics. Temporary and permanent magnets. Temporary and permanent magnets. Temporary magnets are magnets that don't retain their magnetism for a long period of time. Meanwhile, permanent magnet is simply any material that keeps its magnetism for a long period of time. Take note of this. Temporary magnets are made up of soft iron. Temporary magnets. This is made up of soft iron. Meanwhile, permanent magnets are made up of steel, cobalt, and nickel. CNS or SCN. SCN. Steel, cobalt, and nickel. Steel, cobalt, and nickel. Temporary magnets cannot convert an ordinary piece of iron into magnets. If you drop an ordinary piece of iron here or close to a temporary magnet, these temporary magnets are not strong enough to convert that ordinary iron into magnets. Meanwhile, permanent magnets can convert an ordinary piece of iron into temporary magnets. Temporary magnets are easy to magnetize and demagnetize. Meanwhile, permanent hardness, sorry, permanent magnets are hard to magnetize and demagnetize. These guys, they can retain their magnetism for a very long time. In fact, they can still be magnetic. The only thing that will make them lose magnetism is when you demagnetize them. And this is also hard. This one can easily magnetize and be easily demagnetized. But we cannot see that for permanent magnets. And temporary magnets are used or they find application in area where magnetic reversal is required, where the magnetization and easy demagnetization is important. So, for temporary magnets, we use them in transformer cores, in audio tapes, video tapes, electric bells, and magnetic relays, and more and more. So, we use temporary magnets in transformers, audio tapes, video tapes, electric bells, magnetic relays. Meanwhile, permanent magnets find application in DC motors, AC generators, galvanometers, loudspeakers, electric meters, and telephone earpiece, among others. Now, while discussing temporary and permanent magnets, there is something important. It is called electromagnet. Electromagnet. Electromagnets are referred to as temporary magnets because it produces a magnetic field only when current flows in the coil. If you don't put, if there's no current in the coil, it is not a magnet. By the time current flows in the coil of that wire, it becomes a magnet. That is electromagnet. Requires current to produce magnetic field. And when the current is removed, there is no magnetic field. So this is why it is also referred to as temporary magnets. Examples of electromagnets are the toroids and solenoid. In physics, you keep hearing solenoids, a coil of wire. So solenoids are electromagnets. Now looking at my, uh, temporary and permanent magnets, you notice that in temporary magnets, we say steel, the iron is very important, soft iron is important. For permanent magnets, we said steel is very important. So let's 
do a quick comparison of the magnetic properties of iron and steel. Now, induced magnetism in iron is greater than the induced magnetism in steel. Then, soft iron can easily be magnetized, but steel is not. We are trying to compare magnetism in steel and iron. Soft iron, you can easily magnetize them, but steel cannot be easily magnetized. Soft iron loses magnetism easily, but still they retain magnetism for a very long period of time. So this is a short or quick comparison of magnetic properties of steel versus iron. So once again, temporary magnets, these magnets are not retained for a long period of time, but for permanent magnets, it's a material that keeps its magnetism for a long period of time. This is made up of soft iron, this is made up of steel, cobalt, and nickel. This cannot be co cannot convert an ordinary piece of iron into magnets, but permanent magnets can convert an ordinary piece of iron into temporary magnets. Easy to magnetize and demagnetize. They are not easily magnetized and demagnetized. Used in transformers, audio tapes, video tapes, electric bells, magnetic relays, and more. These are used in DC motors. AC generators, galvanometer, loudspeakers, electric meter, and telephone earpiece. An electromagnet is called a temporary magnet because it produces a magnetic field only when current flows in the coil. Torrents and solenoids are examples of electromagnets. And steel versus iron. Induced magnetism in iron is greater than that of steel. Soft iron is easily magnetized, but steel is not. Soft iron loses magnetism easily, but steel does not lose magnetism easily. What next? Magnetization simply refers to the process of producing magnets. And the opposite of magnetization is demagnetization. You are making a material lose its magnetism. This is a typical magnet. Or magnet diagram. The magnet has two poles, the north and the south poles. We can call this the magnetic lines of force. I told you that magnetic field or magnetic line of force, they are imaginary lines. We just imagine them, okay, this is an imaginary line moving probably in circular manner or whatever around the magnet. Now you notice these magnetic lines of force. This is the north, this is the south. Looking at the north, you see that the lines, they are originating from the north. They are going out from the north. Looking at the south, you see they are going into the south. Now look at this. This is north, this is south. You see, from the north, arrow is going out. For the south, arrow is coming in. So the magnetic lines, of course, they are imaginary lines. Now they originate from the north, they go out from the north, and they terminate or go in from the south. Talking about magnetism, the force in magnetism is like, I think this will be a scalar product or a big vector product. Q, V, times V, which is in complete form. Force is Q, V, V, times theta. If where Q is the charge, V is velocity, B is magnetic field. Now, we have the sine theta. If theta is zero, sine zero should be zero, right? So therefore, if the angle is zero or 180 degrees, the force will be zero. Sine 90 is one, if I am correct. Which means, if the angle is 90 degrees, we will have the maximum force. Ladies and gentlemen, if force is charge times velocity times magnetic field sine theta, magnetic field will therefore be force over QV sine theta. So this formula will be used to solve a lot of calculation questions under magnetic field. F over QV sine theta. Our magnetic field is measured in Tesla or Weber per meter 
Back to magnetization. This is how the questions normally come. You notice I've been writing this out. Many of you, you learn to forget, you hear, you don't see. So I've written them out and I'll still go through them so that you don't have any excuse. They will give you option. Which of the following is not a method of magnetization? A, B, C, D. They will give you different thoughts. Now, the methods of magnetization are 1. Hammering in the north-south direction. When you hammer in the north-south direction, you can produce a magnet. B. Stroking with a magnet. When you stroke an object or a material with a magnet, it is called single touch. In that case, magnets can be produced. Or you can choose to stroke with two magnets. If you are stroking with two different magnets, we call that divided stroke. So it's a way of magnetization. Or you can simply place the material inside the solenoid. And this solenoid should, solenoid should be connected to a DC source. Remember I told you that solenoids, solenoids are electromagnets. So when you place inside a solenoid, Connected to a DC source, then or a source of DC, magnets can be produced. And to remove magnetization, the easiest way is hitting. When you hit a magnetic material at a point, there is high chance that you can do magnetization. Or you hammer in the east-west direction. The cardinal point is north-south, west-east. So when you hammer in the north-south direction, magnetization, hammering in the east-west direction leads to demagnetization and when you pass an alternating current through a solenoid in which a magnet is placed and withdraw it slowly to a distance from the solenoid in the west east direction you are demagnetizing demagnetizing so just write them out and read you are going to understand it's something you should probably memorize or understand now applications of magnetic feet the major applications of magnetic field are it helps in keeping a magnet from losing its magnetism. If you don't want a magnet to lose its magnetism, place it in the magnetic field. Or another application of the magnetic field is magnetic shielding, also called screening. If you want to prevent an object or a material from magnetic force, you shield it or you screen it. So keeping a magnet from losing its magnetism and magnetic shielding are major applications of magnetic field. Now let's look at the earth as a magnetic field. The earth that it leaves. Let's see it as a magnet or magnetic field. Now the earth is a giant magnet and it has a magnetic field. This magnetic field is called magnetosphere. The earth is a giant magnet and it has a magnetic field called magnetosphere. The Earth, just like other magnets, has the south and north magnetic poles. The Earth's magnetic field helps to do two things. One, it helps to protect the Earth's surface. Two, it helps to protect the Earth's organism from harmful solar particles. And this Earth, as a magnet, it has a uniform field as the direction no. The Earth as a magnet has a uniform field as the direction. Now, the strength or density is constant at a local place. However, it varies from one place to the other. The field or the line of force of the Earth's magnetic field are parallel lines pointing northwards. That is, they point from south to north. This is for the Earth itself. The Earth's magnetic field or the earth as a magnet now the earth as a magnet has what is called the magnetic axis it has what we call the magnetic meridian it has what is called what is called the magnetic equator in fact the earth as a magnet also has magnetic elements like the angle of dip or the angle of declination these are magnetic elements now the Earth as a magnet, it has what we call the magnetic axis, the meridian, and magnetic equator. Now, what is magnetic axis? Magnetic axis is simply a line 
about which a freely suspended magnet turns or is symmetrical about a line where which a suspended magnet turns or it is symmetrical about and the earth's magnetic meridian is a continuous imaginary line around the surface of the earth through both magnetic poles which means it is an imaginary line around the surface of the earth passing through both the north and the south pole how about the magnetic equator the magnetic equator is the perpendicular bisector of the magnetic axis or meridian equator means to cut into equal or equal half so this it is the perpendicular bisector of the magnetic axis or meridian now let's see one or two things about the angle of dip which is inclination and angle of declination that may actually interest you. angle of dip also referred to as angle of inclination angle of declination also referred to as angle of variation let's see one or two things about them before then the earth's magnetic field finds two major applications the first one is sea and air navigation this is a major application and the second one is mineral exploration so the major applications of this earth as a magnetic field are air and sea navigation compasses for you to find your direction or your way in the water your way in the air and even in the land and compass are very very important without direction without maps without navigations you are definitely going to get lost at a point where applicable and mineral exploration it will help you to navigate and know the areas where there are likely to be deposits of minerals the angle of deep is the angle between the resultant magnetic field and the result, uh, horizontal it is the angle which the magnetic field makes with the horizontal it is important in knowing which material is magnetic and which one is not magnetic it is also the angle between the direction of the magnetic axis and the horizontal now it dips with the north pole downwards or south pole pointing towards the edge and the angle of dip or the angle of inclination is measured using what we call deep circle deep circle on the other hand ladies and gentlemen angle of declination or variation is the angle between the magnetic and geographical axis or meridian it is used in sea and air navigation where magnetic compass is employed in predicting the course and the angle of declination is measured using a declinometer declinometer now variation of earth's magnetic field there can be positional change in magnetic field or even time change time change as a variation of the earth's magnetic field is divided into circular time change and transient time change circular time change happens over a very long period of time while transient time change is over a short period of time now looking at positional change under the earth's magnetic field you will notice that this angle of dip we explained earlier is zero at the equator and 90 degrees at the poles the reason i'm writing most of these things out is for details and is because they are exam questions so that i see it and you see them so you don't forget almost everything here they are exam Question. In fact, almost everything in this magnetism, every point, there are questions. You will see it. We are going to solve a lot of questions, both calculations, non calculations, and diagram. You will see more details, and some things are intentionally skipped. You will see them in the question sessions. Now, the angle of dip is zero at where? At the equator. The angle of dip is 90 degrees at where? At the poles. Now, for the angle of variation, the angle of variation is zero at the geographical north pole and it changes slowly the angle of variation is zero at the geographical north pole and it changes slowly and the lines any line you see that are of equal deep lines that have equal angle of deep are called isoclinic isoclinic lines with equal deep 
are called isoclinic lines. Lines you see that have equal teeth are called isoclinic lines. Lines of equal angle of declination or lines of equal variation are referred to as isogonic lines. Lines of equal D are isoclinic. Lines of equal duration are isogonic lines. Now, lines of zero deep, any line with zero angle of deep is called aclinic line. Line with zero deep is aclinic line. While line with zero, uh, zero de uh, declination or zero variation is referred to as agonic line. Zero. Zero deep aclinic. Zero variation is agonic line. Now, the lines with similar magnetic field intensity are called isodynamic lines. Isodynamic lines. These are lines of equal magnetic field intensity. Now, talking about magnets, there is something else that is very, very important for you to know about magnet and magnetic field. Like certain properties of magnets, which are uh, paramagnetism, diamagnetism, and ferromagnetism. Very, very important. Too much talk, not the full basket. Uh, I think uh, with this, we are rounding up talks and talks and talks when it comes to magnetism. But there are things you should know. There is something called domain theory in magnetism. A domain or a magnetic domain is a region within a magnetic material in which magnetization is in a uniform direction. And the domain theory states that within a magnetic substance, there are many domains or regions of magnetic force, each with a north and a south. Before we look at diamagnetism, paramagnetism, and ferromagnetism being magnetic classification of materials, magnetic materials are classified into diamagnetism, ferromagnetism, and paramagnetism. Now look at this magnet. The magnetic flux is the total number of feed lines passing through a given area. And it is measured in mass wave. You can convert web bar to mass wave. One web bar is 10 to the power of 8 mass wave. The magnetic flux density is the total magnetic flux over a small unit area placed at right angles to the direction of the flux. It is also called magnetic induction. The unit the unit of magnetic flux density is basically the Gauss, and we can convert that to mass well per square centimeter. Magnetic field strength is unlike electrostatic and gravitational field strength. Now, for electrostatic or gravitational fields, force is field strength times charge. Now, for magnetic fields, the force is magnetic flux density times the current element. Current element is the product of current and length in a particular direction. You also have the bar magnet and the earth magnet and other few things when it comes to magnet. Now, diamagnetism or a diamagnetic material is a material that sets its longer axis at right angles to the direction of a strong magnet, uniform magnetic field. When a diamagnetic material seals a strong uniform magnetic field, it will set its longer axis at right angles to this direction. At right angles. Meanwhile, a paramagnetic material or for paramagnetism, the material set its longer axis in line or parallel to the direction of a strong uniform magnetic field. This set is line at right angles to a strong uniform magnetic field. This is in line or parallel to a strong uniform magnetic field. Why ferromagnetic material? When placed in an external field, they are strongly magnetized in the direction of the field. They go to the direction of the field directly. Now, their magnetism 
or their magnetic material, they tend to move from a stronger to the weaker part in non-uniform. The first one is for uniform, the second now is for non-uniform. When there are non-uniform magnetic fields, the diamagnetic material will move from a stronger to the weaker part. Meanwhile, paramagnetic material will tend to move from weaker to stronger part in a non-uniform magnetic field. In a non-uniform magnetic field, the ferromagnetic material they tend to stick at the poles where the field is strongest, at the pole where the field is strongest. For their magnetic material, the magnetic permeability or susceptibility is lesser than one or negative or lesser than in a vacuum. For ferro paramagnetism, the magnetic susceptibility or permeability is greater than one, or you say it is positive. Why for ferromagnetism, the magnetic susceptibility or permeability is positive and it is very, very greater than one, it is large. Their uh, magnetism or their magnetic materials are weakly attracted to magnets. Why paramagnetism, they are magnetized weakly. Then for ferromagnetism, they are powerfully drawn to a magnet. Examples of their magnetic materials or their mag or materials that exhibit their magnetism are gold, silver, and copper. Paramagnetic materials are magnesium, chromium, lithium, and tantalum. While ferromagnetic material, they are nickel, cobalt, and iron. Thanks for watching. You're one and only teacher from the future. I hope you found this class interesting. Feel free to check out the playlist for more amazing, amazing videos. And don't fail to install the Flash Learners application right now for notes, videos, and questions to meet all your needs. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any of my sweet videos. See you in the next episode. Don't forget to tell everyone around about the Flash Learners. Bye.